All right. Hiya, folks. <laughs> State of mind. Uh, I don't know anyone with, with OCD, so, you know, I, I know one person, and that's the legend, Ken Schreiner. If you don't know Ken Schreiner, he's, he's been on General Hospital for how long? I'm headed to 44 years. 44 years. 44 years. 44 years. 44. Headed. Headed. I don't know I'll make it. <laughs> but uh, he's a good guy. He's uh plays a great character. Uh, yes, everybody, Scott Baldwin. Everybody loves him. Attorney at law. Uh, and he's here to talk about, you, you really don't talk about this much, do you? Well, nobody's really interested in uh, OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, is a disorder which can drive your average person crazy. It starts young, at a young age. It, you could be traumatized by something very young. When I was 16, my parents were both killed in a car accident. I'm not saying that that, uh, that is enough to traumatize yeah. somebody. And then it can go from there. I have reason to believe that my father suffered from OCD because he used to change his clothes a lot before going to church. And I always thought that it seemed like a weird behavior. So, um, and my brother does a lot of checking, checking locks and checking and checking. So ah. OCD is, it's an obsessive thought. And the only way to get rid of that thought is to is to, to is to have it is to check it obsessive dis, obsessive compulsion not the compulsion you have to have a compulsion like for example I drove over here on my Vespa and I'm thinking did I park in a good spot is somebody going to back over my Vespa I wonder if I should go out and check on it and make sure that it's wow. a good spot however I was assured by Maurice that it was a good spot. But that's where you get in trouble. You cannot go for assurances. If you if you look for assurances from people, or you know, hey, 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 did that happen? Did hey, hey, hey? Then right. you're already in trouble. You, you this disorder gets the best of you. Depending on the the amount of time, if you spend too much time by yourself, and with COVID and everything, we're all kind oh of yeah, yeah, yeah. So your mind has more time to to mess with itself. So. Uh, as these obsessions take over, whether it's driving, whether, well, what the what bump was that? Did I just hit somebody? Should I go back and check? Today, I found out that the minute you get out of the mo moment of living in the moment, if you like say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the moment you lose the moment, you say, wait a minute, if you just hit somebody, that would be the thing you go, oh my God, I just hit this guy. You get out of your car and you check on the guy. Mm -hmm. So. It's while you're driving down the street that the disorder, the, the oh my God, uh, uh, what, what a horrible thought. What if that guy, that guy got in my way and I saw that guy, but what if I hit him? I should go back and check. Right. And once you go back and check and you get that loop, yeah, you're there's done. no stopping you, right. which, which puts you in a free zone. Do you find, like me, who's bipolar, depression, and anxiety, you don't get a lot of compassion because they can't see the illness. It's like, see this, 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 uh, this cut? Yeah. Okay. Give you an example. I went to work one day with so much anxiety. And, and you know, Donna, God bless her soul. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. She saw for the first time what anxiety was. And I was crying in, the, in my room. And I was, I said, I can't, I can't go up and act. And she you know, help me, and I went up and act. But nobody cares <laughs> because they can't see it. And I fake it pretty well, right? But I come to work with a cut. Oh, my goodness. It's a, I mean, are you all right? Go to the doc. Right. And this is nothing. What you have, what I have, because what you have, from what I've researched, if you don't get treatment, what happens? Well, there is no real treatment. There's no medication to be on. You can pretend to go on a Zoloft or one of these antidepressants that does zero, really. It, all it does is just sort of calm you down. It's like just an anti-anxiety pill. Where someone like you gets no 
they don't know what's going on in your head. Somebody like me, if I got up right now and I said, I can't take it, I gotta go check on my Vespa. Eventually you would say, oh, for Christ's sakes, the door's locked, the Vespa's fine. You would be fed up with me. You'd say, come on, kid, how many times are you gonna do this? And well, yeah, I yeah, know, yeah, I okay. Guess, I guess. Well, I, I gotta, you know, it's in my head. And, but all you're doing is, is inciting it. You're, you're, you're fueling the fans of that by doing it. So at first, girls would be mad at me when I was younger and say, you, you just checked the lock. It's locked. I said, wait, let me just one more check. One more check. And then eventually they get fed up with you and they think that it's enough of this. So they yell at you. They turn on you. But because they don't understand. Well, they don't understand that, that it's the disorder has gotten a hold of you because it's now put you, there's a frozen zone where it, it, you just get frozen, like a frozen anxiety, like I'm, I'm frozen right now. But it, it, so you freeze and then you've got to decide, do I go back, do I don't go back? Then you develop an inner conflict that makes you crazy. And then if you're with somebody and you say, I gotta go back. I'm going back. Right, right. Then they go, all right, that's enough of this. I can't drive with you anymore. I can't, you know, you're driving me crazy. The door is locked. The, the, yeah, I got to, you know what, Ken? I got to be honest with you. And I and, and you just kind of opened my eyes to something. And I'm mentally ill. I I, I, I admit that I yell at you too. And I, I say to you, why don't you just, and I shouldn't do that knowing how difficult that is. You get what I'm saying? But I have to say, I think I've done, I've done a lot of it. Well, not a lot. I mean, we, I basically asked you, how's this parking spot look? And you said, it's good, 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 good. But you just threw it away. It's yeah. good. It was, it's more important to me that, that my spot is good. I don't come out and find somebody ran over my Vespa. I had to make sure there was the right spot. But those are all going on in my head. In your head, you just said, it's fine, let's go. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not an issue. Yeah, I guess. So it. each person has their own issues depending on which disorder that they uh, seem to have picked up along the way over the years. Now, if it goes untreated, I hear it can be bad in the sense of you would have horrible anxiety. Um, I, 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 the anxiety is, is depending on uh, which facet it takes on. If it's the driving facet, if it's the uh, cleanliness facet, if it's just the general, um, you know, uh, you, you get these thoughts. Here's the problem. An OCD person gets a bad thought and they say, why would I think such a thought? There must be something wrong with yeah, it. Why yeah. am I thinking this? The average Joe Blow gets that thought and dismisses yeah, it. Yeah, like, right, right. I know. Right, okay, that was, was a crazy thought. But they, that, but the OCD but has when, to when, analyze it. They have to say, what does that mean? What is that? So usually every bad thought that comes into your head goes against everything you believe. So if you believe that you just hit somebody and kept going, that's not who you are. So it makes you crazy to have a thought to think that you ran somebody over and you're not even gonna go back and check on them. But when you have a negative thought, it, do you have anxiety already? Or it's just a negative thought it's a that no, it turns it, into anxiety? What it is is if knowing that you have, the, 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 you've taken the disorder on full because you've had time to take it on. You know, 10 years ago when I was working a lot and stuff, I was too busy being busy. But when you have a lot of time on your hands to take the disorder on, knowing that when you go out, the disorder is going to attack you. So every time you go out or, or you think, oh boy, which one's gonna get me today? Is it, uh, oh my God, I just you know, shook that guy's hands. I didn't even think about washing my hands. Oh, I just, you know. So these disorders that are, that, that can, that, that there's a, it's a standard issue um, disorder. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, has many, many symptoms, but they're all the same. If you have it, you could have all of them. So you tell me you never felt anxiety? I feel anxiety every day. Uh, oh, I get anxious all the time. But it's not it's horrible actually, it's, anxiety? It's, it's, it's horrible about going, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go to Gelson's today because I go to the supermarket every day. I know at the supermarket, 
there's going to be something that's going to give me anxiety, whether as people, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, driving there, you know, where am I, where did I park? I just backed out. Did I, you know, so the anxiety just stays with you. And it's depending on how, how much it feels like attacking you that day. Mm. Sometimes it can, you know, it can be easy on you. Sometimes you can walk away unscathed and say, no, no, I got this perfect. I'm, I'm backing in. I'm not going to back out. I'm Are there days that you don't have anxiety? Um, or you don't have OCD? No, OCD is chronic. Everybody has uh, it's chronic. It's, you're stuck with it. It's like my like bipolar. Yeah, you're just stuck with it. It comes, it comes, it comes. It, 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 there's no cure for it, and the, and it is chronic. That's the first thing they tell you is don't think that you're ever fixing this. This is chronic. It's it's how bad you let it get, and because of all of these podcasts and all of this stuff that you can listen to and you can you can and, yeah, and sites, yeah. you can you can also as I asked you once a couple of years ago I said have you ever dealt with it, spoke to anybody that had bipolar and you said I think maybe once yeah. and I said the same thing I don't think I've ever met anybody that had OCD and then I started listening to a, a therapist that has OCD treats OCD and I realized that what she's saying is that if you have it this is what comes with the dinner. These things all come with it. Yeah, yeah. So accept it, and here's how you deal with it. You know, accept it. Yes. And there was the, the two words I told you the other day: accept it, acknowledge it, and accept it, and just take it. You know, you know, you you don't want to address it. Yeah, there it yeah, is. Right, right. There it is. I'm not going to address it right now. But it all starts with the with the movie in your head, right? Right. It all starts with, with if you can if you can turn it you know turn it down or turn it up or turn it down, it, it's, as opposed to what happens when you start getting these thoughts like I've just had three months in the you know coronavirus. Right. It was you know I always I I, tell, I always say this. Did thing, you think you were going to get the coronavirus? No, it was it was just horrible. But what it is is. Um, you can't, you can't, it's like when I, this is a thing that I, when I started State of Mind, I said, you got to stay in first, second gear. If you go to, you can go to third, but don't go to fourth and fifth. When I was in fifth, can't stop it. You can't stop that negative thought constantly. You can't. But how, how do you pull out of that then? How, if you're I going went, to fourth or fifth gear, you're doing it because you're alone. If somebody was in the room with you, it didn't help. Did, Which time, still, you'd still go to fourth or fifth gear. Yeah, this time didn't help. I and mean, Paula's the greatest, but I had to go to a psychiatrist and start taking medication. Yeah. So, now one last question. Yes. Because you've been doing fantastic. Um, do you know that there's a there's a, a an actor who's OCD? I oh. want. I don't know. If, I want to know if you can guess who this actor is. Um, I here's I've seen OCD. <laughs> depicted in movies. Uh, yeah, yeah. Leo no, this, DiCaprio. Uh, that's it. They say he says he, they they say he has it. I don't know that. Well, he true says enough. he has it. But he says, but he, but you can have it in. Like I said, it comes in so many shapes and sizes. I mean, it is standard issue. You're gonna get one of them. You, the, it, if if I said, Maurice, I'm so sorry, but I gotta go wash my hands one more time. I just, you know, right. I, I gotta go check on my spot again. I think somebody might have backed over my scooter. It would eventually drive me crazy. Now, that those are like real bad OCDs that you just can't let it go. Now, um, they did depict the movie of Howard Hughes having OCD, and and, and he couldn't he couldn't leave the room because he he, he didn't want to touch the knob. Yeah, the yeah, bathroom. yeah. Yeah, right. But right. I, that's a very theatrical and a high end yeah, yeah. degree. Because, like that show that used to be on Monk, he was always. Yeah, funny. right, and right. The thing that people that do have OCD, when people say, oh, he's so, so OCD about his house, he's OCD about his house, his, his, his clothes, uh, the coordinated, that makes people with OCD really crazy because it, it has nothing to do with it. It's just a term they've thrown out there. It's dramatic. So he's OCD, right? But right. what is that? What is that? That's not what it means. That's not what OCD right. is, right? You know, it's well, not like somebody saying you're nuts. That define nuts to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. So th we're going to end this on this. Um, 
on an up note. Yes. Here you have a very successful actor, 40,000 years on a soap, another actor who's successful. I'm mentally, <laughs> I was going to say mentally screwed up. <laughs> but I'm, you know, what I am, bipolar, the whole thing. And you can live a great life being OCD, being bipolar, anxiety, and depression. You can live an, uh, a, a great life, even though sometimes you think you can't. And like my wife says, she just said to me recently, she said, uh, and it, I didn't understand it because I was in a bad way, but now I get it and I say it all the time now. She looked at me and she says, honey, every time you say you can't go on, you've gone on a hundred percent. Right. It's cool, right? Well, it's true. There's a survival. You you, you forge on. And I know, but it. sometimes... It... <laughs> <laughs> All right, say bye. Uh, All right, thank you, everybody out there. And anybody with OCD, it, 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 is, it is what it is. You'll deal with it step by step, issue by issue. All right. And there's plenty of websites that you can listen That's to true. people talk. That's true. Uh, okay. See you later, alligator. Bye-bye.